Central Valley was once seen as a place that could not fail, a region where water was routed across the state, where fields fed the entire country, where people believed that with enough engineering, any drought could be overcome. But right now, Central Valley is collapsing from within. The reason is simple and deeply troubling. The ground itself is sinking, enough to bend canals, reduce aqueduct capacity, and keep water from reaching where it is needed. A system built to protect America from drought is being damaged by the very ground beneath it. What makes this frightening is that most of us have not felt it yet. Faucets still run. Grocery shelves are still full. Daily life looks normal. But if Central Valley keeps sinking, what happens when this system can no longer sustain millions of people? And how many consequences will have already unfolded before we are forced to face them? We are here so you are not caught off guard by what is coming. Now let us take a closer look. One, the ground is sinking and water is failing. The land beneath California's fields is sinking, and because of that, water is becoming harder to move, more expensive to deliver, and less reliable for people to depend on. Some canals have already lost tens of percent of their original capacity. In certain stretches, more than half is gone. Some communities are losing water with little or no warning, and all of this is happening in the very region that feeds the nation. Across Central Valley, satellite data reveals a quiet but undeniable shift. The ground is dropping, inch by inch, across vast agricultural areas. Not fast enough to create dramatic disaster footage on television, but fast enough to tilt, warp, and weaken water infrastructure that was designed with near-perfect precision. The California Aqueduct, the backbone of the state's water system, has lost a significant share of its carrying capacity in certain sections. This is not because reservoirs are empty, but because the land beneath the canal is no longer at its original elevation. When the slope changes, water no longer flows as intended. The system must operate differently, using more power, costing more money, and delivering less water than it was designed to provide. Farther east, the Fryant Kern Canal shows just how serious the problem has become. Some segments have lost more than half of their design capacity. This is not a rare incident. It is the result of years of gradual land subsidence that has deformed the canal bed to the point where it can no longer function as intended. The canal has not collapsed. It has not triggered alarms. It has simply lost its ability to carry water, season by season. The problem is that these canals do not serve agriculture alone. They are critical to supplying water for millions of people, for cities, for power systems, and for national food security. When their capacity declines, the system does not pause for repairs. It keeps operating in a weakened state, absorbing more risk with each passing year. Even more concerning, subsidence does more than restrict water movement. It can increase the risk of localized flooding, damage roads, bridges, and underground pipelines, and allow small structural failures to accumulate into major losses. These impacts do not happen all at once, but once they take hold, they are extremely difficult to reverse. For downstream communities, the consequences do not require a major disaster to become severe. Household wells can run dry abruptly when groundwater drops just a few more feet. Water service becomes unreliable. Living costs rise. Choices narrow, even though residents have not changed how they live. The greatest concern is not simply that Central Valley is sinking. It is that it is sinking quietly beneath land that plays a critical role in America's survival. While most people above ground still believe the water system can endure one more dry season, one more year, or one more round of repairs. If the ground continues to fall and canals keep losing capacity, the worst case may not be a single dramatic catastrophe. It may be a series of small repeating breakdowns, enough to leave the entire system so fragile that one major shock, a prolonged drought or a sudden spike in demand, could push the region into crisis. And when that moment comes, the question will no longer be what is happening underground. It will be why these warning signs were visible for years before most of us were forced to confront their consequences. 2. The groundwater fix that quietly backfired everywhere. Central Valley did not begin with a mistake. It began with a solution that was once seen as irreplaceable. For decades, groundwater was California's safety net. When drought hit, when surface water from rivers and canals was reduced, people drilled deeper and pumped harder. Crops were saved. Jobs were preserved. Food supply chains did not collapse. 
and the region kept functioning without facing an immediate crisis. In that context, few choices seemed more reasonable than pumping groundwater. For farmers, it was the only way to keep crops alive through dry years. For managers, it was the fastest way to avoid economic and social shock. Not pumping meant instant crop loss. Pumping, at least in the short term, allowed life to continue as usual. And because the consequences of pumping did not appear right away, this solution quickly became routine. Tens of thousands of wells were drilled deeper over the decades. Pumps ran day and night, pulling water from aquifers far below the surface. Above ground, canals still flowed. Roads stayed level. There were no obvious signs that the system was nearing a dangerous limit. That silence created a false sense of security. The belief that groundwater was an almost unlimited reserve. That if something went wrong, it would be visible and dramatic enough to force people to stop. But groundwater does not behave that way. Aquifers respond very slowly. The land does not collapse overnight. And because there was no clear alarm moment, pumping continued, cycle after cycle. As droughts became more frequent and more severe, the system's reflex did not change. If surface water was not enough, pump more. If water levels dropped, drill deeper. This was not an individual mistake. It was the logic of an entire system built to prioritize short-term stability. Even when wet years returned, the habit did not fully stop. Water demand did not fall with rainfall. Infrastructure continued to operate on the assumption that groundwater would always make up the difference. And year after year, extraction moved farther beyond the land's natural ability to recover. The most dangerous part is that no one can point to a single moment when everything crossed the line. There was no day marked as the day too much was pumped. Only small changes accumulating over time. Water tables dropping lower than before. Wells running dry sooner than expected. And the ground beginning to respond, not with a sudden collapse, but with slow, nearly irreversible sinking. Central Valley is not paying for one wrong decision. It is paying for thousands of reasonable decisions, repeated year after year. Each one made sense on its own, but together they created a risk that no one in the system was designed to fully see. And that is what makes this story so troubling. The crisis did not come from recklessness or neglect. It came from solutions that were once praised for saving the region. Solutions that are still being used, even as the ground beneath them is showing it can no longer bear the strain. 3. Why Collapsed Ground Never Fully Recovers Again The problem in Central Valley is not only the loss of water, it is that what has disappeared underground is almost impossible to restore. Beneath fields that appear solid lie layers of sediment formed over thousands of years. Sand, gravel, silt, and especially fine clay layers are stacked together, creating tiny spaces where groundwater is stored. Those spaces give the ground its resilience, allowing water to be drawn out during drought and slowly return when conditions improve. When groundwater is pumped too fast and too deep, natural pressure in these layers drops. Soil particles begin to press together. The spaces that once held water collapse, much like a sponge squeezed too hard. And once that sponge has been crushed, it cannot fully expand again, even if water returns. This is the core of land subsidence. Water can come back, but the space to hold it cannot. Clay layers, once compacted, lose their ability to expand. They lock the ground into a new structure, turning part of the underground storage that once existed into something permanently lost. The consequences are not dramatic. There are no giant sinkholes swallowing homes. Instead, the entire surface slowly lowers, inch by inch, foot by foot, accumulating over time. And because this process is so gradual, it is easy to overlook until infrastructure above begins to react. As the ground drops, canals lose the carefully calculated slopes they were designed with. Water no longer flows the way the system intended. Pipes experience uneven pressure. Bridges and roads develop abnormal stress. These damages do not appear all at once. They build up gradually, driving repair costs higher over time, even without a single clear failure. What makes the problem worse is that subsidence is uneven. One area may sink faster than another just a few miles away. That difference in elevation creates twisting and pulling forces on infrastructure stretching for tens of miles, from canals to buried pipelines. This is why parts of the water system begin to fail even when most of it still appears normal. Unlike drought, subsidence has no clear endpoint. There is no year-labeled recovery of the land. Once elevation is lost, it becomes the new baseline that all future planning must adapt to. 
That means canals must be repaired on lower ground, safety standards must change, and every new project carries extra costs just to compensate for what is already gone. That is why what is happening in Central Valley is especially alarming. The issue is not just this year's water supply or next year's harvest. Every inch of land that sinks removes part of the system's future capacity, and it happens quietly, without a clear moment to stop and say the limit has been crossed. Once the ground has been compacted to this degree, the question is no longer whether water can be brought back. The question is, how much more loss California's water system will absorb within an underground space that has been permanently reduced, before these physical limits begin to dictate how people live, farm, and distribute water across the entire region. 4. A water system. Always one step behind reality. What makes the situation in Central Valley so troubling is not only what is happening beneath the ground, it is how the system above responds to those changes. Land subsidence is not new. It has been measured, mapped, and discussed for many years. Reports exist. Satellite data exists. Forecast models exist. Yet in practice, many important decisions are still made on the assumption that the ground will remain stable long enough. Water management in Central Valley was built piece by piece. Each district, each basin, each operating agency is responsible for a small part of the overall picture. This helps address local problems more quickly, but it also makes accumulated risk hard to see as a whole. The ground does not sink along administrative boundaries. Decision-making does. In many cases, action comes only after the consequences are already clear. When a canal loses capacity, repair plans are triggered. When operating costs rise, budgets are adjusted. When household wells run dry faster than expected, assistance is considered. But all of this happens after the ground has already changed. The problem is that subsidence does not wait. It does not pause while plans are discussed. While reports are written, approved, and implemented, the ground continues to drop, inch by inch. And every inch makes the solutions above more expensive, more complex, and less effective. A growing paradox becomes impossible to ignore. The more money is invested in repairing and maintaining the current system, the greater the risk of locking that system into already weakened ground. Canals are upgraded to keep operating, but must adapt to slopes that have been distorted. Standards are revised not to stop subsidence, but to live with it in the short term. At the same time, reducing pressure underground is slow and full of conflict. Water demand does not disappear. Crops still need protection. Communities still need reliable supply. And each time a difficult choice appears, the system tends to favor whatever avoids immediate crisis, even if it increases long-term risk. This creates a dangerous gap between what science shows and what policy can act on in time. Warnings say that some impacts of subsidence are irreversible, but real-world decisions are often made on shorter cycles, under pressure from economic concerns, politics, and daily life. As a result, Central Valley is caught in a loop. The ground keeps sinking. The water system must constantly adapt to keep up, and each adjustment is made on a weaker foundation than before. There is no clear moment when failure is declared only a growing sense that everything becomes more fragile with each passing year. And when a system responds only after damage has already occurred, the question is no longer whether it can continue operating. The question is how long it can endure before the physical limits of the ground force far more painful changes above. 5. Who pays first when the water system fails? When the ground sinks, not everyone notices at the same time. For many people in California, the water system still works. Faucets still run. Life continues as usual. But for communities living at the edges of this system, the consequences arrive earlier, more clearly, and with far less attention. In many rural areas of Central Valley, household water does not come from major aqueducts or centralized distribution systems. It comes from private wells drilled decades ago when groundwater levels were stable and drilling costs were not yet a heavy burden. As the ground drops and water levels fall faster than expected, these wells are often the first to fail. There is no official notice, no early warning, just a day when someone turns the tap and realizes the water is gone. For low-income households, drilling a new well is not a simple solution. Costs can reach tens of thousands of dollars. Permits take time, and there is no guarantee that a new well will last if the ground beneath continues to sink. For these families, subsidence is not an abstract geological concept. It is a constant worry about daily life, health, and whether they can continue living on their land. 
the impact spreads to the agricultural workforce as well. When canals lose capacity and water delivery becomes less reliable, crop risk increases. Some fields are left unplanted, some acreage is reduced. This does not only affect agricultural output, it directly cuts seasonal jobs in a region that is already economically fragile. For many families, less water means fewer workdays and fewer ways to make ends meet. Even residents who live far from the fields are not entirely removed from this story. As operating costs rise due to less efficient infrastructure, those costs do not disappear. They move into public budgets, into water rates, and gradually into the overall cost of living. Not as a sudden shock, but as slow increases that are easy to overlook in the short term, yet persistent over time. What all of these groups share is that they are not the ones who made the strategic decisions about water. Yet they are the ones who feel the consequences first. Before emergency declarations, before a crisis is named, before the rest of society is forced to look directly at what is happening. Subsidence does not create a dramatic moment for the whole state to notice. It breaks its impact into households, communities, water bills, and growing seasons. And for that reason, the people who pay first are often the ones least able to make their voices heard. 6. When the ground starts deciding our future. Central Valley is not facing a disaster with a clear date. There is no countdown. No single hotspot the entire state must suddenly watch. What is happening here is different from familiar crises. It does not strike. It accumulates. Every inch the ground drops is not just a number in a technical report. It is underground capacity that is gone. A slope that has been bent. A piece of the water system's future ability removed. The danger is that these changes happen slowly enough for people to adapt, but quickly enough to move beyond control when looking more than a few years ahead. Central Valley was built on the belief that water could be managed, distributed, and replaced when needed. Subsidence raises a harder question. Not whether there is enough water, but whether the ground beneath still allows the system to function as it once did. Droughts can end. Rain can return. Reservoirs can refill in a wet season but land that has sunk does not recover with rainfall. What has been compacted underground becomes the new condition every plan above must accept. Every repair project, every infrastructure investment, every future water allocation decision rests on weaker ground than before. The issue is not only cost, it is choice. A system operating on unstable ground must always compromise. Less flexibility, less room to absorb the next shock greater vulnerability to change, something Central Valley knows well. So far, much of this remains quiet. Not everyone sees it. Not everyone feels it at the same time. But when physical limits begin shaping how water moves, how food is grown, and how communities endure, that silence is no longer a sign of safety. The final question is not who caused this. It is how long we continue adjusting a system on shifting ground before those limits force everyone to face them at once. And when that day comes, Central Valley will no longer be only a story about sinking land. It will be a story about how a society responds when the foundation it depends on begins deciding the future instead of the people. Thanks a lot for sticking with us till the very end. If you found this video useful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you won't miss any of our daily uploads. And now, go ahead and explore some of our top recommended videos popping up on your screen. Goodbye, and see you in the next one.